Hello, good people. What's up? A partially injured David Taub here with you today. Uh, a little black eye, a little getting better every day. Uh, I took a hit playing basketball on Saturday. You know, basketball's a rough sport. What are you going to do? I'm not going to let that stop the rock and stop the next level guitar machine rolling here. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about cables today, instrument and speaker cables, and hopefully you'll find this lesson informative. Um, a uh, couple things about cables first of all I want to talk to you using uh, your guitar instrument cables with non-active pickups that's a little bit the formulas kind of change so we're talking about cables with non-active or passive like most people most players I think use uh, non-active pickups okay the big thing to keep in mind is there's a difference between instrument cables and speaker cables okay and they perform differently so um, I think it's important to learn a little bit about electricity electronics to understand wh what cables work best and why. The three biggest things I think about cables, instrument cables are for your guitar is um, you want to have something that's very durable, very rugged because they're going to get thrown around, tossed around, stepped on, so it's got to be made really well. Um, you want it to have low capacitance, the, the lowest possible. And three, very well shielded, okay, um, because low voltage, there's low amounts of current running through these instrument cords, very susceptible to electromagnetic interference and other noise, so you want to have it shielded very well. I think you get what you pay for on this planet. You know what I mean? Whether it comes to guitar, guitar cables, you know, a, a pair of pants, a car, whatever. So generally, the cheaper guitar cables are higher capacitance and they're not, the shielding isn't isn't as, as good as on the higher end cables. Um, why that's so important with instrument cables is that a lot of people, there's a few myths out there, a lot of people think the fatter the instrument cable, real thick cable, the better because that's less resistance, right? Yeah? No, I don't think so. Resistance isn't that much a big deal with an instrument cable. With a speaker cable, yes. With an instrument cable, it's not about resistance because you're driving your amplifier, which has a input impedance very high, possibly a few thousand ohms. So whether there's zero ohms or one ohm or resistance in an instrument cable isn't going to make a bit of difference when you're driving such a high input impedance like an amplifier. So resistance does not mean much with instrument cables. It's about capacitance, okay? The ability for that cord between two things to conduct that signal, okay, that electricity, that's capacitance and that's what it's all about. So you want the lowest capacitance possible. The longer the cable, the more capacitance it's going to have. So you want to keep your cables as short as possible. Your patch cables, your guitar cables, everything should be as short as possible. Um, you know, under, you know, if you're plugged into a 50 foot cable or a real coiled cable, not a good idea. You're, you're too hot, the capacitance gets higher, it's going to rob you of your signal, okay? So um, keep your cables as short as possible. I like the higher end cables made by a company called Mogami. Um, monster cables I like too, but I use Mogami's more. They're copper. The thing I like about them, Mogami's been in business you know, a long time, 50 years, and in the past they were only available to like professionals, audio pros, and only available in bulk, big quantities. So they're kind of like the industry standard when wiring studios and stuff like that. But now they're available in cut lengths that anyone can get them. You can buy them, you know, Guitar Center, whatever. And uh, I like them because they're incredibly low capacitance. They're made very well. I like the angled ends. Look how they're built. And very high shielding. They use this um, carbon impregnated PVC as an extra layer of shield to help eliminate noise. So it has the three huge things that I look for in a guitar cable. They're expensive, yes, but Here's the thing, I don't want to have to worry about my cables, so if anything ever goes bad with them, I just bring them back to Guitar Center where I bought them, I don't even need a receipt, they just give me another one. I never had one go down. So I like the Mogami cables, um, they're just so high quality, and notice they are thin. They are not real thick, because again, the higher end cables also, they braid the wire a lot thinner. It's thinner and mo more braiding, which actually makes the cable more durable and better. So. Uh, but that takes longer to make, hence drives the price up. Well worth it though. Remember, anything you put in your signal chain affects your tone. You know, don't chintz out with cheap cords. Um, so I like the Mogamis. The Monster cables, I, I don't use as much, but they're really good. I have one here. This is a Monster patch cable. 
And look at how well that's constructed and how well that's made. Again, this is Mogami gold, gold ends, you know. Um, so, very, very good cables. Um, now, your speaker cables are exact opposite, okay? The speaker cable, like for instance, here's the cable I use that connects my head, uh, my amp head, into the cabinet. Now, with speaker cables, they run on totally opposite principles. There's a lot more current, lots of high voltage running through these. So, capacitance isn't, a, I mean, um, isn't as much of an issue. Neither is um, noise, because with such high voltage, it's hard for that electromagnetic interference or noise to break through that. Easier on your instrument cables, because less current to get over to get into your signal. Here, um, you don't have to worry about as much as that. What's the key with speaker cables is resistance. That's the key. Speakers are very intolerant to high resistances because you're driving, uh, you're coming out of a low impedance output of your amplifier, connecting that to a low impedance loudspeaker with a high current, a high signal in between, lots of voltage, lots of current. So there, resistance is key. Notice how fat this is. See. You want a nice, fat, extremely, you know, low resistance speaker cable. This is made by a company called Planet Waves. Look at those ends, how well they're made, gold tip, you know. This is made of, I believe, oxygen-free uh, copper. Is that a big deal? I don't know. It probably makes it less rust, less uh, susceptible to corrosion, you know. Um, so this is made by Planet Waves, and you want to get for your speaker cables really uh, remember it works opposite instrument cables so they should be really thick resistance is the key with them um, so the most important cable for you guitar play for your guitar players is the one that attaches your guitar to your amp that one should be the lowest capacitance possible or your guitar to your first stomp box right that one really needs to be low capacitance the ones attaching to your effects you know yes and no uh, usually you're talking a low impedance output out of your most stomp boxes so maybe not as important I still use Mogami cables and use the same ones you know I don't use a Mogami a monster a one foot a three foot you know again keep it consistent again all will help your tone um, so basically remember with guitar cables instrument cables it's about capacitance you want to get the the lowest capacitance possible the most ruggedly and durable main and you also want um, the most shielding, generally, which is going to equate to usually the more expensive ones, but it's worth it, man. You don't want to be worried about get your cables going down and breaking and robbing you of your sound or interference getting in and crackling. Extremely no low noise are these Mugami cables and the Monster cables. So check them out. Look how thin that is. You don't need a real thick, thick, thick cable. Resistance isn't, isn't you're driving such a... <laughs> such a high impedance on, on the input on your amplifier um, okay so I hope you found this helpful there was a lot of questions I was getting about cables uh, they do matter your choices do matter anything matters when it comes to your signal between your guitar and your amp or your hands your pick everything comes into play all right uh, if you want to study more in depth we have over 250 in-depth lessons uh, in, on, for beginners and immediate advanced gear written lessons jam tracks theory on our website nextlevelguitar.com check it out uh, if you have any other questions shoot us an email I'm David Taub and we will see you in the next module rock on